uh, biofeedback and muscle re-education. What's it all about? Volitional contraction produces normal order of recruitment from slow twitch to fast twitch. Contractions with cortical input, which you do with biofeedback, seems to produce a better recruitment pattern. And the patient has to focus. They can't look at a magazine or check their email or, you know, do uh, uh, messaging while they're exercising. I'll have my kids download the app, which takes about 30 seconds, and you can connect with their app onto the biofeedback amplifier, and patient compliance really goes up when you can actually see your muscle activity. Now, another thing we've been doing lately is looking at active hyperextension. So uh, this is a great tool uh, for you to uh, really introduce quad contraction and try to get the patient to pick the heel up. So you can look at this normal side here and look at the hyperextension by measuring how many millimeters or centimeters of, of uh, heel height you can get with a contraction. So this is showing uh, active knee extension. Okay, so an active knee extension, you can see here, and if you can't do a straight leg raise, do an active knee extension, uh, which allows you to uh, get more quad activity. And, uh, you know, this is a great tool for people that are inhibited. Instead of trying to murder them with a leg raise, do an active knee extension. So this is a, a great tool and another uh, way to get the quadriceps to fire. Okay, another thing you can do is uh, do a prone stretch. I really like this uh, for muscle inhibition to try to get the hamstrings to be quiet as you lay on your stomach with your kneecaps over the edge. And uh, this is a good tool for you. We do 10 minutes of this. Uh, this is uh, one of the old videos I have. And you can see the heel height difference here. This is all due to muscle hamstring activity. Uh, and what you want to do is reduce that activity by teaching the patient to relax the hamstring. So you want to get the light all the way down to the bottom. Uh, that's what we do with the, uh, the M trigger is let the light go all the way down to the bottom and teach them to control that so you can get that heel height difference down to almost nothing. Now, the other thing we have with our device is gamification. So this is a, uh, a pretty high level tough M NBA player who's working with the gamification. This is one of the things that really works him really hard. Uh, this is one of our first games, which is the bicycle game, where you contract your muscle and you try to get the bicycle up as high as you can to get the stars. So you want to gather those stars uh, and then you go through a relaxed mode, you go back up the ramp, and more than anything, it really requires a deep contraction. Probably the toughest exercise we have is the rollerball exercise. So this is a little bit more advanced. And you can see uh, you're in a relaxed mode here on, on this. And then as you contract, you try to hold the ball against the wall as you contract your muscle. That's a 10 second on and 10 second off contraction. So you can contract as hard as you can against the wall here. You can set the threshold of sensitivity and you want to try to keep it from falling into those cracks. Once it falls into the cracks, it makes it a little more difficult. So this is a new thing we've been doing, uh, is initially just when it starts, have you have no relaxation mode. So you're contracting and trying to get the ball to go into each cycle here. And you can see our NFL player here is working really hard to contract and get it to fall into each cycle. He's contracting really hard, and as you'll see in a minute, he's profusely sweating uh, with this activity. And then he rests for a few seconds, contracts, and keeps it all the way against the rest period right there. Uh, all right, now go again. Oh! Oh! So this is more of a quick contraction. It really teaches them control. And again, more of an advanced uh, program. So uh, this is uh, called the rollerball. You can see he's, he's working really hard. So recruiting more motor units allows you to have a bigger muscle. This is also one of the TheraBand products, the TLX, CLX loop uh, TheraBand that we use, and we're strengthening near the end range on the hamstring. So we're using the biofeedback to really enhance uh, distal strengthening 
And this is great for hamstring injury. So you tear your hamstring out near full extension when you're decelerating. So we're working on that deceleration position and we want him to look at this uh, biofeedback as he goes in that deceleration phase to really fire the hamstring uh, in, the, in sort of a deceleration and lengthened position. So uh, what I'm going to talk about this evening is just uh, for a few minutes about how we use biofeedback in our clinic. Uh, this is a young man who's uh, had a couple ACLs, uh, unfortunately on this limb, a, a college basketball player now. And you can see, as Russ mentioned, we're using it as an EMG unit. Um, here he is here in good quad contraction. We have one, one lead over his VMO and one lead right over his rectus. Uh, but many times we'll go VMO to vascus lateralis just to uh, kind of look at the differences of, of the two. Um, and this is what I was referring to. This is an NFL player. And He's contracting his VMO, he's contracting obviously his entire quadriceps, and we're looking at the ratio of VMO to lateral. So we're using both channels. Uh, what's nice is, you know, for an individual like this, a lot of times we'll just turn the iPad so they can actually see it, so they get some visual uh, uh, cueing as well than just the audible. So what's nice about the system is you can make it audible or else you can make it visual. And he's, this guy's got obviously a great contraction. It's worked well. Now an NFL player who's got a lot of calcification in his MCL. He had an ACL, uh, patellar tendon graft, lateral meniscus repair. And his MCL had a pretty significant uh, injury to it that was left alone, but he calcified. I mean, I wish I could show you the MRI, but I didn't really think of putting it in here. And when we do our stretching, as Russ was mentioning into extension, his hamstrings go in a little bit of spasm, but also his gas rack. And I know it's hard to see, but trust me, this is bulging up, his medial gas rock, his medial hamstring. So by putting biofeedback here on his hamstrings, but we'll also put it on his calf, when he's doing his overpressure program, it really has helped him dramatically to decrease some of that tone. What we have is electrodes uh, for the biofeedback on this gentleman's upper trap and lower trap. And what he's doing is a modification of Dr. Kibler's um, exercise called the robbery where he's externally rotating and at the same time of externally rotating he's posteriorly tilting and by posteriorly tilting he's activating his low trap well the problem is a lot of these individuals they have hypertonicity of their upper trap and so upper trap is firing as a lower trap is and and sometimes the upper trap can even override it and so the idea of the biofeedback is obviously to give this person um, impulse or, or, or feedback as far as what muscle group is working harder. The other thing you can do with this is change the arm position. And some individuals, you can see he's, he's past 90 degrees of elbow flexion. Some people we bring up to 115 based on the biofeedback. So it's, you know, I'm one and I know Russ feels the same way. I'm not going to say do every exercise for every person in the same uh, movement pattern. It doesn't work that way. Your recruitment patterns are different from person to person. And what the biofeedback allows you to do is individualize the exercise prescription. And for me, lower trap is very, very important. Here gives you another idea. This is a guy I just, uh, just had in the clinic earlier this week. Look at his elbow flexion. I know camera can be a little misleading. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, but his elbows are even more flexed than the previous video because he found that it was a little bit different. When he flexed up his elbow more, he actually got lower. Uh, channel two to the right is upper trap, to the left is lower trap. So you can see lower trap, he's getting good green, whereas upper trap is staying pretty low, and that's what we want. Last couple uh, little slides here. Here's a young man who's a baseball player. Look at his posture. So he's anteriorly tilted. We've got biofeedback on his infraspinatus. If you listen closely, I'll be quiet for a second, you can hear the hum. That's when he hits the target. There was one right there. So the system's easy to use. Um, he actually probably needs to be a little bit more posturally tilted there when he's doing his exercises, a little bit more retracted. 
This is one I like a lot. So I put the uh, electrode, sorry, I stopped there. I put the electrode on the back of the shoulder because I want to bias, I want to bias the amount of contraction that he's getting. I don't have anything anterior um, just because I, uh, sometimes you get a false signal anterior, but you can certainly try that. I would, I would ask Russ to chime in on that in a minute, but I'm doing a rhythmic stabilization. So he's not moving through space. I'm asking him to hold a static hold. Most people have a hard time activating posterior cuff and he's hitting it pretty well there based on the threshold that we set. So a lot of times I use this with cuff repaired patients. Uh, they can't turn on the posterior cuff and they have a super scapular nerve type of problem. And so consequently, we do a lot of biofeedback on the back of the shoulder. So channel one is the posterior cuff. Channel two is the lower trap. And you can see as Kevin showed here, uh, we get really good EMG of the lower trap with this uh, Swiss ball robbery exercise. This is uh, Tab Blackburn's uh, W exercise. Another good exercise for lower trap. You can see he's struggling, he's fatiguing really quickly because if you have to keep your EMG activity up, it's, it's really fatiguing. Here's a couple of other exercises. I still like to do the uh, dynamic hug. Uh, again, channel two is a serratus anterior. Channel one is the posterior cuff. Typically would have the patient looking at this screen, but this is just for demonstration to prove these EMG uh, studies that Kevin alluded to. Uh, so this is a good tool. Uh, Kevin talked about the wall walks. We use this with TheraBand. Channel two is a serratus anterior. Channel one is the posterior cuff. You get really good. This is probably the best uh, EMG activity for the serratus anterior. Uh, when you have a patient look at that, it even works even better. Couple, here's the posterior cuff again. Uh, channel one is the posterior cuff. Channel two is the lower trapezius. So we're stimulating both the posterior cuff and lower trap here. Uh, Kevin and Mike Rano did a really good study to show that sideline external rotation is the highest EMG. And these EMG activities, again, uh, channel one is posterior cuff. Uh, you get really good EMG uh, with that activity. Uh, this is another one we just started doing recently is a deceleration exercise. Now we're into the COVID videos. You can see that. So we're wearing these stupid masks, which, uh, you know, we have to wear. We got gloves on, all that good stuff. Externally rotate. And what we're really getting him to do on the deceleration phase here is really try to fire up your rotator cuff on the deceleration. And it kills him. I mean, this he can only do about 10 reps with this. You can do probably 20 or 30 reps without the EMG or biofeedback. Now we're making it harder. We're sliding the little bar to decrease the sensitivity of the amplifier. So he has to put out more EMG activity of his own. This is just giving you another view of that. So again, the posterior cuff is, is working. This is probably the most difficult and most uh, uh, tough uh, firing and fatigue of the posterior cuff is concentric, eccentric hands-on technique. Here's a, a real elite uh, amateur golfer who is really working the deceleration or eccentric phase of the posterior cuff. And you can see that he's really fatiguing. Yeah, that's really burning. So again, the biofeedback is just another tool to really enhance our uh, program and give your people a little bit uh, more activity with their muscle. 